push to talk. Yeah. 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 Welcome, everybody. My name is Kalle Dahlhammer. You've probably seen me make a fool out of myself earlier today. And this is my colleague, Benoit Bima. Um, since this is partly about sports, um, we figured it would be best to have at least one person on stage who actually looks like he would be doing any sports. And we're talking about a pet project of ours that the two of us, together with my son, Jan, who's also running around but who would be too embarrassed to listen to Daddy talk, that we've developed together. And um, so you've heard about this cute thing, right? Um, so have we. Um, we're using it during the day to develop boring corporate desktop applications and exciting embedded stuff and everything else. And after we come home from work, we're using Qt for our, <coughs> uh, our cool pet projects. You may be using it to sort your DVD collection or to automate your, um, your uh, garage door. But we've actually taken Qt a step farther. We've, <coughs> we've put it into our sporting activities. Yeah, I mean, being a nerd doesn't have to be incompatible with being a sports if guy, right? Uh, well, I think the important thing is that when you're a nerd and sports, you kind of combine them too. So you start like kind of lightly, so you get the GPS uh, app for your phone so you can track. So then you get like the Bluetooth heart rate sensor so you can track your heart rate. But at some point, it just doesn't do the trick anymore. You kind of want to program more. And so, yeah, that's um, what we did. Basically, we um, We're basically, yeah, we, we set up a system that sends text messages from behind the rocks in the forest. And this is roughly what this looks like. So in a couple of sports, we're using RFID-based timing systems. Uh, triathlon would be one example. Multi-sport would be another example. Orienteering is the one that we are concerned with here. And all of these sports, um, what all of these sports have in common is that um, the runners run away from the arena and they disappear in the forest or, or somewhere in the city uh, in the case of a triathlon. And then they come back an hour later, which is not exactly super exciting for the people in the arena. So um, during in all of these sports, there are certain intermediate stations where the <coughs> contestants need to punch that they've, uh, that they've been there, which is what you can see here. There's a little so-called dibber um, and that you stick into this so-called uh, control unit and that re <coughs> records that people have been there, whether it's an orienteering control or a change over station in a triathlon. Um, so yeah, this is um, the problem we've been starting in. Like people go in the forest and like we just don't hear about them anymore until they come back. And we don't know anything about the intermediate teams. So um, there are um, existing systems uh, commercial system, but the problem is they cost more than 2,000 euro to develop, to use. And we're talking about sports club that have a very tight budget. It's like really hard for them to uh, use more than one or 200 euro per, per race. And and also we are also talking about non-developers uh, that that yeah that need to be able to set up the system without having to use serial console or things like this. And also, because we're talking about putting electronic in the forest that communicates with the arena, uh, we need something that is not only long range, but can also be behind mountains or in very rough terrains. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, what we've been starting with. Consists of, uh, this consists of uh, a couple of components. First of all, we've got the commercially available uh, unit. This is, comes from a system called Spot Ident, which is um, used in all of these sports. There is another competing system called Emit. This is the one that we happen to use. These boxes cost about 120 euros, and this is what every uh, club who's arranging races like this needs to have. So that that bit we needed to buy, or rather that bit we had already. But for the actual radio transmission, we built our own transmission system, which consists of a um, Raspberry Pi of a GSM module um, that sits on top of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you see my <coughs> delicious assistant here to show this. This will be available for $199.99 after the talk, <laughs> plus $20 shipping and handling. And we have a voltage regulator 
um, on the device and a battery. Oh, the battery, yeah. A, a fairly uh, powerful battery because this might have to be in the forest for many hours. Don't forget the lunchbox. And oh yeah, this, this is um, in order to keep this uh, safe from rain because it usually rains when we do these kinds of things. So the other part of the system is, of course, like uh, we're sending this SMS in the, for in, the, in the forest, but we need a way to receive them. So we could have, of course, people uh, like regist registering and will get SMSs. But we develop a system based on uh, the BlackBerry, uh, uh, the BlackBerry phones, uh, so we can receive the SMS and parse the text. And according to the the runner's number, we will match the runner's number with their name, and we'll be able to, in real time, in a HDMI big screen, for example, display in the arena who arrived when uh, on the competition. And of course, all of this, the, um, the QML, this is Qt4 and Qt Quick 1, and I run Qt5 on the module in the forest. It's all Qt, obviously. Well, do we even need to? <laughs> We don't, say that. We, we don't do anything else, really. Um, so here's how this works. The athlete comes to the control unit, uses their, like, not their finger, obviously, but their, um, their RFID chip to punch. And then we get a serial, serial frame in a largely undocumented format. Um, so the first thing we did was reverse engineer that data. Um, then the software, the Qt-based software that runs on the Raspberry Pi is formatting that as a text message and it's sending that as a text message in the format that you can see here. The first six digits are the unique runner's number, so every chip has a unique serial number. This is how you identify the various runners or the various tri uh, triathletes. And we also ship along the <coughs> the timestamp of the punch. That is important because, as you will uh, see uh, in just a couple of seconds, there may be a bit of a delay, and we want to know if, we, for example, if we have several runners coming after each other, we want to know what the distance between them was to see how tight the race possibly is. And on the other side, in the arena, we are receiving a text message, and in the simplest of systems, you don't need any software at all on the arena side. You're just reading that text message and you can see, okay, it's the runner with that number and they punched at that time. But we have the software which runs on the BB10 phone, which um, can parse the timestamp, parse the athlete number, replace the athlete number with something more readable, like a name uh, or a team name possibly, and then show that and show that with the intermediate time. Okay, so something a little bit more technical. We have... Um We've been thinking about a lot of uh, different way to communicate from the forest. Uh, we choose uh, text-based, um, so like yeah, of course with a SIM card and uh, text-based uh, system. But there is a lot of possible ways that we could have used. We could have used GPS via IP. The advantages of it would be that you could have like any internet-connected device connected to that and display the results. Uh, the problem with that is that it's, it's maybe a little bit more complex to do the connection uh, from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, but of course, with uh, SIM-based modules, you don't have any range restriction. Uh, I know that in Sweden, at least, you have very good uh, uh, network, phone, cover, yeah. network, coverage. network coverage, even deep in the forest. Well, I mean, there's only forest there's only in Sweden anyway. Sorry. And uh, yeah, so that's, that was pretty good for us. And also, you, need, you don't need any specialized device. I mean, everybody's got a phone, and um, you don't need to buy something more. You could just have this system and configure it to send it SMS to a couple of persons in, in the arena. And yeah, that would work just fine. And uh, the problem with uh, frequency module is that, of course, range limitation. You, you need a, a special uh, receiving module, but the advantage is, is low latency and it's probably cheaper than having a SIM card that you need to feed with uh, money all the time. Otherwise, it just won't send any SMS and that will be awkward. 
On the other hand, we typically have about 300 runners in a race. So we are paying in a race, we are paying possibly for 300 text messages, which doesn't cost a whole lot these days. Right, it's pretty so, much free and unlimited anyways. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we got like a prepaid SIM card here and... Got with 60,000 text messages per year. So yeah. we are not using that even. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. So, help. <laughs>